Hi everyone, I'm Michael. I'm a developer here at Vendasta. Um, so I'm gonna apologize in advance for anybody that doesn't know how to read code because there's going to be some code in this conversation. Uh, so there are many programming languages out there. Okay? There's B, C, D, A, B, C. Some of them even have real names like Python or Ruby. All right. Uh, so when it comes down to choosing a programming language, you really want to choose a programming language that suits your needs, right? So, so use the right tool to solve your problem. Okay? And sometimes multiple tools can be used, but this talk is going to be about Go in particular. So here's a quick overview of the talk. First, I'll introduce Go. Where did it come from? Why did it come from there? Uh, then we'll solve an interesting problem using Go and its uh, concurrency primitives. And then we'll look at some of the performance benefits that we've seen since switching to Go at Vendasta. Uh, this little guy on the right here is the Go Gopher. That's the language mascot, and he's going to be appearing throughout the talk, so I thought I'd introduce him too. All right, so where did Go come from? Well, Go was a response to scaling at Google. Basically, everything at Google was getting bigger, right? They had tons of servers, they had tons of code, and they had tons of developers working on that shared code. So really, they needed a way to increase their developer productivity and increase their application performance. Okay, so legend actually has it that Go was thought up while waiting for a 45-minute C++ build. <laughs> so how does Go scale? Well, Go scales in multiple ways. It's very performant. Okay, so Go builds really fast, it runs really fast, and it gives developers the tools that they need uh, to take advantage of the processor. Okay? But Go is also very maintainable. All right, so um, basically, clear is better than clever is a common Go proverb, and what that means is your code is written to be read, okay? And that philosophy rides throughout the language. It's a very simple language. So let's get into some code. Okay, so here we have a function. It does a search, takes a query of a string, and it takes a database, and it returns a result. Okay, so the way the function works is it takes the database you pass in, it runs the do search method on that database, and returns the result. Conceptually, it can be thought of as this little gopher with his cart running over to a pile of books, sifting through the books, loading his cart up with the applicable books, bringing them back and giving you the result. Okay? So the problem with this is it's slow. Okay? So a lot of the requests will take too long for the users and people aren't happy about that. So what can we do to solve that problem? Well, we can race our gophers. Okay? So now we have three databases or three piles of books. Right? and they're shards or replicas of each other, and we're going to send a gopher to each of them. Okay? So now we've got three gophers, they're each running towards a pile of books, they're each going to go through, sift through the books, get the applicable ones, return them, but the real change is the first one that comes back to give us the result is the winner, and that's what we're going to send back to the user. So what does that do for us? Well, if we have normally distributed uh, server latencies, if we send multiple gophers to go to two different servers, then it's less likely that they're going to take a long time, right? So if we send one, it could take upwards of 100 milliseconds. If we send two, then it's more likely that one of them is going to be quite a bit faster. So our tail latency is improved. All right. So how do we code that? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the name of our function. Our function is now called fast search because it's fast, right? So now we're passing in a query to our function, and we're going to pass in any number of databases. Okay, So you could pass in 1, you could pass in 2, you could pass in 30. That dot, dot, dot there is the syntax for a variadic argument in Go. Um, so the result stays the same for our return variable. Now, the first thing we'll do inside the function is we're going to define a channel. So what a channel is, is it's a communication mechanism between your gophers or your Go routines. Uh, think about it like a synchronized pipe or a queue. Next, we want to loop over all of our databases. Okay, so for each database that was passed in, we're going to run this function. And this function looks an awful lot like that search function I showed you earlier. Okay, so it takes in a database and it runs the do search method on that database. The difference here is instead of returning the result of the do search method, what we're going to do is we're going to write that result to the channel. Okay, and another important piece of this code is the Go keyword. The Go keyword says run this function as a Go routine. Basically, I'm not going to wait for you. Go do your thing. So now all three of our gophers are often running towards the books. What do we do next? We wait. Okay, so this piece of code here on the return is a read from the channel. And in Go, if the channel is empty, this read is going to block. 
right? So we're blocking here and we're waiting. As soon as one of our gophers, our go routines, writes back to the channel, then we're going to return and uh, give the result back to our users. All right. So you might be saying, Michael, you're wasting an awful lot of resources. You've got your one fast go routine, and all the other ones are still out there sifting through books. What can we do about that? Well, let's cancel those requests that we're not using anymore. So the way that we can tell those gophers, you know what, stop working because we don't care about you anymore, is we can give them a context. All right, so if we create a context, we get back our context and a cancel function. All right, so now we take this context and we pass it into our do search go routine. And uh, that way the go routines can listen to the signals. And now um, we defer a call to cancel that context. What the defer does is it uh, runs as soon as you leave the scope of the function you're currently in. So as soon as fast search returns, the defer call is going to run that cancel function. And that's going to tell those gophers, you know, go do whatever else. We don't care. So what are some takeaways from that? Well, Go enables concurrency. Right? It really lets you take advantage of the processor. It's super easy. You don't need to be an expert. All you need to do is use your two letters, go, and it's off and doing its thing. You don't need to understand threads. You don't need to understand memory. There's no mutexes and there's no callbacks. Okay? It's just simple concurrency. So let's go with Vendasta. What are some of the performance advantages we've seen since switching to go with Vendasta? All right, so for a git from our database uh, using Python and the Google App Engine data store, we were seeing 100 milliseconds for a particular entity. When switching to Go, that dropped to 5 to 15 milliseconds. That's uh, obviously got some other factors at play there with uh, moving out of App Engine and directly accessing Bigtable, but that's a significant increase. Um, further, from doing a get all from Elasticsearch, and Elasticsearch is another type of database that we use here, we were seeing four seconds to get all the entities from Elasticsearch using Python. Switching that to Go, those drop down to 500 milliseconds, and that's a huge difference if you're sitting there waiting for your web page to load. All right, well, that's all I have for you. Hopefully, I've whet your appetite and made you interested in Go.